Those of you who know Victor and Gabby will know that English is Gabby's second language. And so the most terrifying thing of today was this. As those of you who speak two languages or more, one of your languages is usually the language of God. And it's the language in which you speak to God with and share your emotions with. And you have another language maybe that you use in your relationship and another one for your children. Their language is English. But the language of God is Portuguese. Desde pequeno, meu sonho era sempre conhecer o Canadá. E eu sempre tive esse desejo muito grande no meu coração. E quando eu tive a oportunidade de vir aqui pela primeira vez, eu sabia que era isso que eu queria. E aí quando eu vim aqui pela segunda vez, eu vim estudar, é, para tentar fazer um college daqui. E aí eu lembro que meu pai sempre falava, Gabi, se você não é, passar no college, você não vai ficar. Gabi e eu first met. Well, okay, I'll give you a little bit of a background story before. It was uh, kind of, you know, just living day by day. Uh, things were just going smoothly. And I remember I'd con converse with my mom, who's like probably my best friend. And she would say things like, you know, God's got the girl for you and, and she's just going to show up. And, and I'm kind of, you know, like a little bit more, you know, dreamer realism at the same time. And I would tell her like, Ma, perfect girl's not just going to walk into our church. E aí eu sei que eu estava muito focada no inglês, querendo aprender para poder tentar passar no college. E aí quando meu pai estava aqui durante esse, esse, esse tempo, eu conheci o Vitor. É, eu não esperava mudar os meus planos, né, porque eu estava bem focada no estudo. Mas aí eu conheci ele e eu achei, ah, tá bom, né, tipo... Sure enough, a couple of weeks later, uh, I was at the front of the church participating in something, and uh, Gabby came in and sat down and kind of got my attention right away, and uh, I was uh, handing out communion to the entire uh, service, and I handed it to her, and I remember I was trying to play it really cool, trying to like be very serious, kind of like the Zoolander look, and um, she kind of saw right through that, because I almost like tripped up a little bit as I was giving it to her. Tanto que hoje eu vejo o quanto esse tempo foi importante pra gente, até pra gente se conhecer mais. And I remember when we went on a date, she told me that she was going back to Brazil. She was studying in Canada and she was going back to Brazil about a month or so after this, this date. As she went back to Brazil, that, that, that love kind of just made me like, all right, bought a ticket almost the next day to go visit her. We were separated for about six months and I went in, about in between that to go to Brazil. I think within that time it really started to cross my mind uh, the idea of us getting married. E depois de um ano e meio ele me pediu em noivado. A gente está juntos há quase três anos. And I would just, uh, there, was no, there was no contemplating it. It was like okay, just wait, not a matter of if. And we one day eventually um, kind of surprised her at my elementary school that I grew up at, just down the street from here. And uh, yeah, dropped down to one knee and asked her to marry me, and she said yes. And at this point, we still don't really know, you know, she's going to go back to Brazil for a little bit after studying, but it was just so right. And that's what this whole process has felt like. It's just been right every step of the way, from the beginning that she walked into the door to dropping down to a need to sitting here today. Um, there's a phrase, if you can't handle me at my worst, you don't deserve me at my best. Honey, you don't just handle me at my worst. You take care of me, you love me, you calm me down. Therefore, since you do all those while I'm in my worst, then there is no best without you. Honey, I promise that every single challenge we have an obstacle, and I know I need to remind you once in a while that there are obstacles, 
Maybe you have me. I'm not an obstacle. All right. I'm not a challenge. I'm challenging. I'm not a challenge. <laughs> and baby, I just will do everything in my power to make it the best for you. And one thing that a lot of people might not know is we are getting married in the same exact room that I saw you for the first time. And when I saw you for that first time, I thought there was no other experience that can top that. Till today, when I saw you today. So baby, I love you with all my heart and any promise is a promise that I can hold up to. I love you. Ever since I was nine years old, I was in love with Kenneth. Everybody would ask me why, and I could never answer. I had no idea why. God just put this in my heart, and it became my dream. After 13 years, he gave me the answer to my dream. He gave me the strength to cross the world from Brazil to Canada to meet the love of my life. It was here in this church that I saw you for the first time. It, it was here that we first spoke and laughed. And it's here that we are promised each other that our love will be forever. Victor, with joy and in love, I take you to be my husband, to be the father of my children and the companion of my days. I promise to share with you in whatever happens or standards or want, adversity, adversity or beliefs that may, that may be part of our lives. I understand that our lives, lives should together be woven, woven into a single tapestry of love and mutual concern for as long as we both remind our life. Therefore, having witnessed their covenant of marriage by the power invested in me by God, I declare them husband and wife in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Victor and Gabrielli, I now invite you to celebrate your marriage together with a kiss. It is now my privilege and pleasure to present to you Mr. and Mrs. Victor and Gabrielli Caragina. This is a night that everyone has waited, and you are absolutely gorgeous. Victor, you look good too, okay? I've known Gabby for seven years. We know, we know more about ourselves than we realize. We laugh, we cry, we laugh until we cry. And we have been a joke, which only we find funny. But in all seriousness, it's 50-50. She gets 50, and then you give her the other 50. <laughs> and uh, you guys are uh, perfect for each other. I haven't seen a couple as happy as you guys in a long time. Victor, I love you. You know, um, you were my little buddy when I was 17, 18, or 10. And you know you used to fall. I, I, I love you like a son. Uh, I truly do, and I'm very happy that you found Gabby. And she makes me so happy. Then when I look up at that table, I don't just see my brother. I see my best friend. I'll tell everyone actually how Victor approached me to be his best man. It was 13 years ago. I was 10 years old. Victor said to me, "Hey." Listen, whenever I get married, you're my best man. I looked at him with my Game Boy at hand and didn't really comprehend what was going on, but I agreed with him. I was going to be his best man. Gabby, the thing I have to tell you today is that this is just the beginning. Many people will come up to you tonight 
about with you and what you should do and you should, what you shouldn't do. Marriage is much more than being in love. Marriage is about loving. It's about choosing to love even when you don't want to. It's about loving through good times and bad times. Learn with bad moments, and I wish you a beautiful life together. I love you.